What is up guys? Jake from One Hive here with the next Elite 8 series video. Uh, I know you guys have been waiting on this one, but with the re replay wipe, I was a little bit uh, behind, but we're caught up now and they've got some excellent attacks for us. Uh, just from their current war, we only had one war to watch on, uh, but they did not disappoint. You see they really killed it here. Almost a perfect war, that one town all 10. They've got a few attacks left. We'll see. Maybe they get it cleaned up and get the perfect war. Uh, but everything else, I believe, is cleaned up all the way down. Yeah, they got it all. all one base. I bet they get a perfect war on this one. We'll see, though. Uh, first one we're going to look at is 007 versus their number 9. Uh, beautiful attack here. This one was different than something I than what we normally see. Um, sends a few hogs in. Two groups there. Just take out a few defensive buildings and to get the CC lure, which was nice. And you see that this base and gets two bombs there, which was beautiful. Uh, you see this base has sort of got three more uh, big open, com like, you know, maze compartments. Um, and what 007 does with those is, is really uh, a clever idea. Uh, takes care of the CC troops here. You see just bring them over to the side, a few distraction troops, witches go down, wizards to back it up, uh, normal stuff there. But then sends a golem in uh, on these, in this little maze area, and then just starts sending like hogs in, uh, not... Not like a wave of hogs or anything, but just a few. He's got his kill squad there behind that one, so he's sort of letting that uh, the kill squad and the king take care of that compartment area. He does send in a few hogs right here to help out. Uh, he loses quite a few of those to spring traps, just sort of surgical hogs in there. Uh, but that takes out that area. Then you see he sends this golem in down here at the bottom with the same, same concept there uh, and more surgical hogs back in behind it. Uh, not giants, but something that's going to work its way through and like tank forever, you know, tank the whole the whole raid, unlike a giant there. So pretty interesting. Uh, drops a heal spell there for the Hawks just entering the core, that giant bomb going off. And then you see that most of the point defense is wrecked here, only a few left, and drops that last heal spell right over the top of them uh, to protect everything. He's got his king's ability. Uh, just really nice. I like the way he used the, the golem to tank for his kill squad uh, and the king, and then for his hogs as well. So that was uh, just a, a little different, a little different take on a on a surgical than we've seen. Uh, beautiful surgical go ho by 007. Keep it up, man. All right, the next one we're going to look at is Andy taking on number twelve. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. This was nice. Uh, no, I know you guys love the redheads. I know you're going to love a Valka tag, and he does it so well on this base. Uh, good base selection for it, uh, but remember what we talked about how the Valks are easy to stray. I want you to notice here he drops a few hogs just to get the CC lure. Uh, how wide he takes this funnel, which is sometimes what you've got to do. He literally takes out an entire side of this base from like 12 o'clock to 9 o'clock. The whole thing goes down. Uh, you see he's got his witches down over here out of the CC to take out the CC troops. Got the king down. It went down pretty quickly, uh, but everything's pretty much under control at this point. With the witches taking out uh, what's left, a few wizards to back up there, flank them a little bit. Uh, but that side is sort of capped. You know, the, the funnel is sort of created on that side. Drops a golem up the middle, more wizards, and then a few balloons up top here to take out this wizard tower, and then a few wizards backing that up to take out the trash buildings. And at this point, you'll see right here, he's got a ginormous funnel created for his Valks. Uh, there's really nowhere else for them to go. He's got some wall breakers to let everything into the core. Drops that rage a little bit... <sighs> I mean, the wall breakers got it, okay, and they got to the core. I would have leaned a little bit more towards that, but beautiful idea to get those wall breakers uh, raged and getting everything opened up to the core. Obviously, a heal, a rage for his Valks inside the core. Nothing's going to be taking them out. And then once that's done in short order, the balloons come in. And I love how where he targeted the balloons. Look at what's left on the base here. Three cannons on that side. He focuses all of his balloons over here on the towers that can actually hurt them, as opposed to those uh, cannons, which are just going to sit there. Uh, yes, they can hurt his kill squad, his Valks that are left, uh, but really smart focusing the balloons on that side and letting them just work their way and pulling double, triple duty on what was left. So perfect go uh, Valo at Town Hall 8. Just, I mean, this, this would be the how-to guide, the type of base you want, how to do it. Just everything about it was great. Awesome job, Andy. All right, uh, moving on, number 13 here, SMPL uh, Stable Boy. Uh, doing, I wanted to bring this one 
talking a little bit about the air sweeper at Town Hall 8, because it's probably a little bit bigger of an impact at Town Hall 8 than it is at Town Hall 9. Uh, this guy, I don't know if you can see that there, he's got to point to the center of his base. And had he simply pointed that out to the away from the center of the base to sort of the 3 o'clock position, or maybe even like 5 o'clock or 1 o'clock, any of those options would have been better, because at that point he could have at least encouraged an attack from a different side. But when he's got it pointed to the center of the base, what is he defending against there? Um, nothing is the answer. Uh, the SMPL takes off one of the defensive uh, air defenses with a three lightning technique, which is perfect. And then again, he can simply create his funnel coming in from this side here with the air, air sweeper never affecting, never shooting one puff of air towards any of his dragons. You can see had he had it turned the other way, it, would, it wouldn't have stopped a mass drag attack from this side, especially not until it gets leveled up much more, but it would it might have discouraged someone from coming from that side, had to make them change their plan. He did nothing with it. Uh, so just swarms it on that side and is very patient. We'll start to fast forward here. Very patient with his balloons, which I love to see, waiting, 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 waiting for that air defense to target onto him, to lock onto those uh, dragons that can take a few shots then sends his balloons in and you see that dragons go down there it takes out a couple of dragons because that air mine hit but still it gave it bought those balloons an extra two seconds of free travel time to get in there and take out that air defense and then there's nothing left for uh you know take out all these dragons that he has left it's a three star at that point but really wanted to point out guys on your air sweeper i'm going to do a video about it sometime but either use it don't point it towards the center of your base that's absolutely worthless so just don't do that. Uh, moving on, let's just go down one space to Ruby taking on their number 14. Uh, this was a very nice go-ho and also had a, a sort of a take-home that I wanted to illustrate. Uh, dropping a few hogs in, take out an air defense or air archer tower, and uh, get the CC lure. Ben's just going to bring them up to the top here. When you're doing go-ho on Town Hall 8, now this does not apply the same on Town Hall 9 at, in all situations, but on Town Hall 8, the golem lasts so long, the point defense is so much weaker at Town Hall 8, that you really want to bring your hogs in an opposite direction. You want to get this 30 troop space, you want to get something out of it. And what you want to get out of it is allow it to tank for your kill squad to take out a section of the base. If you send your hogs in right behind it, the hogs are so much faster, they don't have to worry about walls, they're going to get right out in front of your golem, take out the defenses that are shooting at your golem, and then... It's worthless at that point. It's not going to be doing anything else for you. You see right here, a few wall breakers going in, the golems out front, doing the tanking, the witches, the wizards, all that's doing work. And Ruby brings in a surgical hog attack from the south, on the opposite side of the base. That's perfect. It's what you want to do. Uh, this is how you get maximum value for that 30 troop space that you invested into that golem. Uh, dropping heal spells for the hogs down there. You see the golem still doing all that tanking, still point defense, splash damage. It's all getting targeted on that golem. The kill squad's been safe this entire time and allows you to to sort of sandwich the base, to take it out from different angles, and it, the base goes down quicker that way had you then had Ruby sent the hogs in from behind his golem. Again, that golem will be beaten on a wall right now with nothing shooting at it. Instead, it's dead. It's The golemites are right there, the last one still doing some taking for him. Uh, so you see what we're talking about there. Really, that's the only way to get full value out of your golems at Town Hall 8 is to send your hogs in from the opposite side of the base. Let that golem do his job. And your kill squad that you brought, let them do their job. So very nicely done, Ruby. I uh, thought that would be a good take-home lesson for the viewers. All right, let's look at one more before we wrap this thing. Uh, as soon as it's three-star right there. Uh, let's see, number 16. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Stefan taking on number 16. This was a really, really nice uh, holo wee wee. Or I guess it's actually, I think he did bring witches in his CC. We'll see. Uh, sends a few, uh, uh, just a giant there, I believe, actually, to get the CC lure. Gets most of it. Wilson drops one more hog to pull out that Valk, which it does. Uh, brings him up top. Uh, then it's going to, again, drop some barge just for distraction. And then the CC with witches, uh, a few wizards to back it up just to take everything out here. Uh, the Valky is in there. That can be troublesome, especially at Town Hall 8, but just overwhelms it with a few wizards. And see right there, it goes down. Now the, the witches are able to load up on the skeletons again. Does lose a wizard because of it, but that's a pretty good trade. Right here, starts sending in all of his... Uh, 
hogs up top, sort of surgical, just each one of these top defenses. Uh, and what I liked about it is it's a reverse holo, but how early on he sends these balloons. And you see the heels go down, uh, the hogs are targeting, the air defense are not dead, but they're targeting them. And right there, balloons going down. You've got to get them down early. They're slow. It takes a while. The hogs are going to take those air defenses out before they can really hurt anything. So he actually got benefit. Uh, all these point defense going down right now, his hogs never had to deal with, never really got hit by. That's why he's got a bunch of hogs left at this point. Uh, just a beautiful attack. Uh, that is exactly how you want to do uh, a reverse holo at Town Hall 8. Get those balloons down early. Get some value out of them. Because remember, they're not great cleanup troops. If nothing else, let them tank for your hogs. Uh, they're they're good at that. Oops, sorry. We didn't hit that. Uh, but really good job to Genesis. Uh, awesome attacks, guys. Hopefully they get this uh, perfect war out of it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, Jake from One Hive reminding you guys to suck less.